as you can see, you pretty much don't see the wave anymore, isn't it? And this video contest is for everyone in the world. It doesn't matter where you are at. As long as you like math, then go to Blender.org slash Black Pen Pen. Choose the question that you like the most, make a video about it. That's all you have to do to participate. Okay, in this video, let's talk about why we use radians in calculus, and let's also talk about what if we use degrees in calculus. And in this video, I'll just give you guys the graphical reason for it, and we'll also assume that we know some derivatives, right? Like derivative sine x is cosine, etc, etc, okay? And let's look at the graph of sine x first. So, here we go. In this case, we also consider this in radians only. And we'll make a compare between what if we have this graph in degrees. And here's the key. When we are making the graphs right here, we have to make sure that the x and y scale is 1 to 1. But I cannot draw a perfect graph by hand, so have a look right here. This is the picture for you guys. Anyway, notice we have negative 1 and 1, right? That's the minimum and the maximum for you for sine. And if you consider the first period, it will go from 0 to 2 pi. But keep in mind, pi is approximately 3.14, 2 pi is approximately 6.28. So if that's 1, you have to make sure that just go up to you know, 6.28. So you have to make sure everything is with a scale 1 to 1, right? So that's the idea. Now let's talk about derivatives. Well, we can interpret it as a slope of the tangent line. Let's consider when x is pi over 6, and let's draw the tangent line there. So that's very nice, huh? And of course, we can look at the slope of the tangent line. That's what we have. Well, as we mentioned earlier, we will assume that we know the derivative of sine x. So here we go. When we have sine x, well, the derivative of sine x is just cosine x. In fact, when we are trying to prove the derivative of sine x is cosine x, as somewhere, we will have to use some argument, and that's where the radians came in as well. But that will be for another video. Well, we can just plug in x equals 2 pi over 6. And we can just work this out. That will give us cosine of pi over 6. And that's square root of 3 over 2. Right? So that's pretty much the idea. Now, secondly, let's look at the graph for sine x. But this time, let's look at the graph in degrees. Here is the deal. The range for sine x is still negative 1 to 1. But when we're talking about degrees, the period will be from 0 to 360. So when you are making a graph right here, you have to go from 0 all the way to 360 to get the first period. Do you see much change? Not much, right? So first of all, that's the idea. You don't want to wait so long and then you really don't see much change. That's why we don't use degrees in the first place when we're drawing the graphs. And of course, if there's not much change, we cannot really talk about the derivative. That's why we use radians for it. That's much better because, again, from 0 to 6.28 radians, we see the change. If you are talking about degrees, well, you have to go from 0 up to 360 to see, well, not much change. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much the idea. And now let's talk about what if we use degrees. How do we take the derivatives? And if you look at 30 degrees on the graph right here, well, you will have to go to the x value being 30 and draw the tangent line over there. So let's find out the slope of that tangent line right here. Here is the deal. Suppose we want to differentiate sine of x. And this time, let me just emphasize, here we have degrees, right? Well, here is the deal. We are going to be differentiating. We will just have to do the conversion back to what we did earlier. Here is the deal. Sine x. Well, we have x degree. Do what we did over there. But backwards, we are just going to multiply it by pi radians divided by 180 degrees, like this. This is how we change it to radians, right? And you see the degrees will cancel. Now we are just considering how to differentiate sine of, this is just pi over 180, which is just a constant. So we have pi over 180 times x. 
like this. And now, of course, we can differentiate this because, as I said, we are assuming we know all the derivatives. The derivative of sine is cosine, and the input stays the same, pi over 180 times x. And remember, the chain do multiply by the derivative inside. This is the constant times x to the first power, so the derivative of this is just pi over 180. And in this case, if we want to find out the slope of that tangent line, this is what we do. This time, the x, again, is what? In degrees, right? This x is in degrees, because when you multiply by this, you get the radians. So what we have to do is plug in the x equal to what? 30, the x equal to 30. And then put it here. You will see this is going to be pi over 180 times cosine of pi over 180 times 30. And this is just pi over 6 radians. And in fact, this right here is just square root of 3 over 2. And of course, you just have to multiply by pi over 180 with that square root of 3 over 2, like this. Of course, you can work this out a little bit. If you would like, you can put down pi square root of 3 over 360. And you can work this out, and the number is not that big at all. It's less than 1, for sure. So, that's how you will differentiate if you want the input to be in degrees, which is not preferred. So, this is why.